But right now, let's talk uh, to Reem Ibrahim, Director of Communications at the Institute of Economic Affairs, because a uh, story that we saw uh, late yesterday, more than a million NHS operations were carried out in the private sector this year, and I'm assuming, Reem, very good morning to you, um, these, are, uh, these are all operations that were paid for by the NHS, but were operational in the private sector. Hello, good morning, Mike. And well, you're absolutely right. I mean, this is really interesting research from the Independent Healthcare Providers Network. And what they are saying is that around 15,000 every single week, so operations, about 50,000 every single week are carried out in private hospitals and clinics. Mm. Now, of course, a lot of what the stories seem to be talking about here is that trauma and orthopedic surgery, such as hip replacements and, and other different, d different kind of procedures, Team to, so tend to be pretty popular procedures where private hospitals are delivering national health service care. So you're absolutely right, this is NHS work that is being provided by private hospitals. A lot of this is coming within the context of the National Health Service being, as you already know, as we all know far too well, being under incredible amounts of pressure. Mm. We know that waiting lists continue to peak and then they, they sometimes come back down and then in the winter they get higher again and that older people tend to not be able to receive that kind of health care that they need. And so what's happening is the NHS is using private, private hospitals, private clinics, to deliver some of that NHS care. And presumably it, it's a direct sort of um, transaction. Uh, the payment is then made by the NHS to the private hospital or to the private healthcare centre, whatever it is. Um, any idea how much this is actually costing? Not, not entirely sure of the exact figure about how much this is costing, but indeed, again, we, we know that the National Health Service as a whole is spending around just below £200 billion a year, and yet people mm. aren't able to receive that care. So what's really interesting is there have been stories about the number of people that have been choosing private health care off of their own volition. Yeah. They know that the NHS doesn't uh, give them the health care that they need, and so they've been going to the private sector themselves. Many people are actually leaving the country in order to receive health care that they're just not able to get in this country mm. and at the exact same time mike you see so many labor politicians and so many well so many politicians in general talking about the fact that the nhs is on its brink and so we need more money being spent within the national health service clearly there is an element of a public and private partnership here and this seems to be working the problem is that we haven't done it properly we're outsourcing effectively rather than allowing these institutions to work within the national health service or indeed dare i say it actually reforming the nhs as a whole more meaningfully. Isn't it interesting as well that the knock-on effect to the private sector is that the private sector then becomes more um, clogged up because I was reading a piece not long ago actually um, in I think White the Telegraph saying that an awful lot of private um, hospital sort of un units and hospital trusts if you like are actually getting waiting lists now as well because they've got they're dealing with so much um, healthcare operational uh, stuff from the NHS that they can't do their own work. Yeah, it's really interesting, actually, because the private sector just doesn't have the capacity that the National Health Service has. And the reason for that is because we just don't have an abundant private health care system mm. in, in this country. A lot of that is because, of course, the National Health Service is effectively a, a, a health care monopoly, right? It's the, it's the government using money uh, to, to spend on the National Health Service itself. And so it takes up such a huge part of that health care market, if you will. I think what's interesting, Mike, is the reaction from so many Labour politicians, especially West Streeting himself. I mean, the health secretary said that the Labour Party, so the Labour government will use the private sector for as long as it takes. Mm. Now, what's interesting, I think, is the way in which the overture window seems to have shifted. We know that, for example, on Monday, uh, Keir Starmer and West Streeting launched that NHS consultation, consultation on the long-term future of the NHS. And I think that's really important. We're starting to have these honest conversations. But we have to be very, very honest with ourselves. This is not not a sign that the NHS is working. This is the complete and utter opposite. Yeah. This is a sign that the NHS is just completely at its brink, that it's being forced to use and lean on private sector initiatives and private clinicians and private hospitals. This is not a sign that the NHS is working. This is a sign that the NHS is broken mm. and it's being forced to do so. Yeah, absolutely right. It's also, is it not, a sign that, uh, uh, that West Streeting, who before the election appeared to be one of the more, I would say, kind of interesting 
uh, uh, prominent cabinet ministers because we thought uh, he was going to actually make a difference. But ever since he's been in, uh, he's kind of reverted to type and he's just gone, oh, well, of course, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day and, you know, we can have a consultation. And despite the fact that we spent 14 years preparing for government and despite the fact that we told you we'd be ready to, to hit the road running, hit the ground running and start, you know, absolutely saving uh, money and start making the, uh, the waiting list smaller, none of that's happening. Uh, and they've been in three months. It's, yeah, it's really interesting. And obviously, with the Lord Darcy report that we saw uh, not very long ago, effectively saying that the NHS is broken, but don't worry, we still want to keep the NHS system as it is at the moment. The IA came out with a paper not, not too soon after that, saying that effectively the, the best way to reform the National Health Service is by denationalising the NHS. So, mm -hmm. paper called Denationalisation of the NHS, looking at countries across Europe and actually implementing a social health insurance model in which you have competition between providers. Now, what that means is as a patient, as a consumer of healthcare, you can then get to pick where you get your healthcare from and providers have to compete to give you the best service that they can. What's clearly happening at the moment is the Labour government have adopted the Lord Darcy report and so they're not implementing those meaningful reforms that are absolutely required. Absolutely right. It is extraordinary how unprepared for government this government who said they were very prepared for government have been, isn't it? It is. It is. It's really interesting that they're not prepared at all. I think what's interesting is what you said earlier, Mike, that the that West Treating, for example, during the election was actually quite a promising character. I thought he was quite interesting. Yeah. He said the National Health Service is broken. Immediately after the election, he also said that it was sort of front page of, I can't remember which newspaper, but it was front page of one of them where he was saying that the National Health Service is broken. And he is right. He just clearly doesn't seem to have uh, any kind of notion about what the reform actually should look like. I think that when we're thinking about this in the long term, we need to be more radical. We need to be more radical yeah. when it comes to NHS reform and be honest with ourselves. The NHS hasn't been working for a very, very long time, and a lot of that is because it is a bureaucratic black hole. We are spending huge amounts of money on the system. And let's be very clear, this is not a political problem in, in so many ways. This is people's lives mm. we're talking about. People are not able to receive the healthcare that they need. The UK has the second highest avoidable mortality rates in all of Western Europe. This is a problem and the government need to be more radical in actually facing it. Yes, they absolutely do. Couldn't couldn't agree with you more, Reem. Very good to hear, hear from you and good to see you. Reem Ibrahim there, Director of Communications at the Institute of Economic Affairs. Fizz.